We are back on It's Always Game Day in Cincinnati. Lindsey Patterson, Mike Santagata. Mike, what's up? Uh, I am in the city of brotherly love. It's a, a change up. Um, I did not care about Thursday Night Football yesterday. I missed it for a concert. And uh, today, never been here. So I'm going to do all the generic Philly stuff. You have to. Great time in Philly. I, I noticed over on uh, your X page now, that's what they call it. You had your first Philly cheesesteak? So, I mean, I've had them before. In fact, I've had some that were pretty close to Philadelphia because for my job, sometimes I travel um, to the middle and middle eastern part of the state, but I never go to Philadelphia. It was great. Yeah. Uh, Dallas Sandro's uh, north of Philly, but it was like 10 minutes, 15 minutes from the man, which is where the concert was. It was great. It was awesome. I will say there's one place that compares that I've been to, and it's called Cosmos Cheesesteaks in Scranton, Pennsylvania, which nobody's really vacationing there. But office <laughs> lovers, really, yeah, office lovers. Well, if you're stopping by just for the, you know, for the thrill, uh, Cosmos Cheesesteaks, it was awesome. I mean, that place was really cool. But Delosandro is awesome, um, cheesy, beefy, really soft bread. I was into that. I was like, okay, cool. Like, this shouldn't have like that crusty thick bread. Anyway, I think we need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ch- we got it. We got our cheesesteak conversation <laughs> in there. Uh, we'll move on to Joe Burrow. Uh, I'll be completely honest with you. Again, this week is all pushed back. We're recording on a Friday morning, but yesterday was their Wednesday, Thursday with a Monday night football game. They get that extra day of rest. Hearing from Zach Taylor and Joe Burrow going into just Thursday morning alone, I'll be completely honest with you. I would have said it's off the table. Joe Burrow won't play Monday Night Football. I don't even know what the Titans game looks like, but it's it's a week by week thing. After hearing from Zach Taylor and Joe Burrow, I I don't know if I changed how I'm feeling. I still think that Joe Burrow is going to be out, and we'll have preview prediction and all of that later on in the podcast. But even Joe Burrow going out to practice, I felt like was a little surprising. I know he was in a DNP. He did not practice, but he was still going out there. He had a few pre-stretch throws, stretching with the team, a few reps with Ted Karras, again, at the very, very, very beginning. Um, but how are you feeling going into Friday when it comes to Joe Burrow and his game status? Yeah, um, I'm not optimistic he plays. It seems like he's doing everything he can to play, but it seems like on the other end, I don't think they... There's just... If he plays this week, from what I was seeing, is that there is an increased chance of an Achilles tear, and I think that's the main reason that the front office and coaching staff are going to try to hold him out. Even if he feels okay enough to, like, hey, I, I can throw, and, like, yeah, I can't run, but, you know, I can move a little bit. It's just even then you still have the increased risk of what could derail this season and bleed into next season. Um, I think he could play, though. I I wasn't very optimistic about that at all before, but he's just doing everything he can to play and pushing the limits of what a do not did not practice looks like. Because now I'm like, Hey, what is limited if that wasn't, you know, that wasn't a limited look where he's throwing a little bit, he's in all the drills, but uh, not doing them. He's just kind of like outside of them, talking to the coaches. I don't know. Uh, That was my first thought was like, I always think it did not practice as like hanging out in a sweatsuit. I went ahead and um, it was someone I talked to during training camp, Deepak. Uh, he's an MD doctor over on X. And I just asked him, I just sent him a DM and I said, well, you know, what does this look like for Joe Burrow? If he plays, if he sits, is this going to be a thing he's going to be dealing with all season? And he told me, he's like, if he plays on Monday, it's honestly just a decision they have to make. They're 0-2 right now. Do they risk sitting Joe for something that they don't want to deal with a, another re-injury. If he plays, there's a 20% chance of a re-injury. If he doesn't play this week, it does go down. If it's multiple weeks, uh, like a four to six week thing, it's under 10% that he has a re-injury. I'll be completely honest. If Joe Burrow doesn't have any re-injury or any additional tweaks to his calf, I don't think the Bengals will put him on IR. I think they are going to manage this as they should, as protecting their franchise. Um, If it's something that the whole entire season or even the next six to eight weeks that Joe Burrow is dealing with but still playing with, I could see them going limited with Joe Burrow all season in practice, similar to what we saw with Lyle Collins. I know it's a little bit different when it's your quarterback versus an offensive lineman, but just being as light as possible during practice 
and then it's go time during the games and just how they manage this. I think that's going to be extremely important. But I would say listening to Joe Burrow's press conference, he was pretty straightforward when he looked at the reporters and he said, I am preparing to play Monday night football. Um, did he support Jake Browning 100% if he has to go out there? But I truly feel like this is going to be a Sunday decision. I mean, maybe even Monday morning, they say this is what's going to happen. But personally, I'm just, I don't, I don't even know what my percentage is right now. And I don't know what the best decision is. It's honestly, how is Joe Burrow feeling? Zach said he was dealing with a little soreness. NFL Network reported on Wednesday morning that he was feeling better over the last two days. Joe Burrow said time heals and he's less sore. Um, so, you know, Joe's going to have to deal with that, that pain tolerance. What does that look like? Um, every player that goes out on the football field is dealing, it, is taking that chance to to injuries and, and all players aren't a hundred percent. This is just a little bit different because it's the quarterback and it's a calf injury that just seems to be lingering and lingering. And unfortunately it felt like he was close to the finish line when you watched him in the second half. And it was so close to the end of the game when the tweak happened. So I feel like these extra days are extremely important for him. Um, do you think it's important that Joe gets at least a limited practice in, or does, does he need to go full for you? No, I don't think he has to go full. Uh, mostly because it's a Monday. Also, he's the quarterback. I could see limited all week or did not practice and then gets a limited in there. It's tough. Uh, you know, um, I don't think they're like you. I almost think zero chance to put him on IR just based off of like what they did with Chase. Where it's like, well, if he's ready to go, then we'll get him in early. What they've done with guys in the past is just like they try to avoid the IR with guys that are super important just because they don't want to, in a championship window, lose games because they were overly cautious. Uh, they'd rather be slightly aggressive about that <clears throat> and give them a chance to get out there. <sighs> I think this is a Monday call. I think it's going to be a Monday call. I don't think, I don't think we're going to find out Sunday. We could, but it kind of stinks for those of us playing the, the fancy football that may have him, um, I would prepare otherwise because I, I don't know if he plays and my gut tells me no. And I think it's going to be a Monday call of just like he wakes up Monday. How is he feeling? He gets t checked out by trainers, doctors, whatever. And that's where they go with the decision. Um, I don't, I feel like the team, you know, they're going to try it. I, I think Burrow is going to try to like, Look, if I feel good Monday, like I might not feel perfect Sunday, but what if I feel better Monday? Like this is a day-to-day -day type of injury thing. So we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> it could go either way, and I think it'll be Monday when they make the call. I would say I'm more confused now on Friday morning than I was probably going into Thursday because I'm like, yeah, there's probably no way he's playing on Monday Night Football. But now I'm like, I don't know. It's Joe Burrow. Um, and, and the thing is the Bengals aren't going to just say, well, Joe says he's ready to go. Um, can we, can we just go ahead and, and, and just go with what Joe's saying? It's his body. He's going to know what's going on. That's not, that's not going to happen. Zach Taylor, the professional trainers, um, the doctors that they were talking with, even Zach Taylor said they were going to go to doctors. So they are going to get the professional opinion. They will not put Joe out there unless they have all the right answers. And sometimes it's, it's difficult to get those with a soft tissue injury. Um, but I'm just, at the end of the day, I'm just hoping Joe's healthy, get, get Joe healthy. That's the most extremely important thing. I know it's a, it's a bummer when the, the season has all these high expectation and even Joe Burrow talked in his press conference about adversity. Um, you know, at the end of the season, every team is dealing with adversity at some point and it's even, even the good teams, it re it's really just kind of how you, you end the season it's what really matters. And obviously you don't want it to snowball and it's a little different than it was last year. So yeah, it's, you know, they returned to practice today. They'll, they'll have a few walkthroughs before Monday night football, but I agree with you. It's probably going to be a Monday decision and, and we'll find out if, if Jake Browning is going to be the starting quarterback and we'll go ahead and continue that conversation. We'll play the what if game. If Jake Browning is the quarterback, what does this offense look like on Monday night? football? I think entirely different. And this is one of the toughest parts of the coaching staff, I think is that if it's Jake Browning, he's probably going under center. They're going to try to run run the ball a lot more. They're probably going to try to limit some of the spread stuff. They're going to maybe even go jumbo sets more often, you know, like maybe two tight ends. Maybe they're even bringing in that extra offensive lineman set. We haven't seen that often because they're going to want to protect them. They want to protect them with the run game. And, yes, they could do that with Joe Burrow, but I just think if it's Joe Burrow out there, he's most comfortable in the shotgun. He's most comfortable spread out. He wants to get five guys in the pattern. I think that – that is a battle of 
is the coaching staff preparing two different scripts to start the game <laughs> of like on one script they've got like okay this is how we're going to attack the Rams if it's Browning and we're going to use a lot of run game and do this all this stuff but if it's Burrow <laughs> you know like we're going to get to this other thing um I don't know I think that is difficult on the coaching staff really because it's going to be a different offense in my opinion I think Jake Browning they're going to try to protect him his shot plays his passes are really going to be off of like boots and uh play action fakes from under center i think we don't need to go back too far to see how the offense changes i'm not going to include any of those like week 18 nonsense games but if you look back when burrow tore the acl it was a spread team before he tore it they're doing a lot of that lsu stuff and then when he tore it they switched to brandon allen and brandon allen was running a lot of under center and some rollouts and uh trying to pound the rock a little bit more when you get to a quarterback like that that's when you have to protect them with the run game and this offensive line is improved they're an improved run blocking unit so we'll see if it has an effect like maybe they can get through this game without him by just running the ball i mean other than aaron donald rams front not really threatening uh uh you got like can you name another person on the line besides Aaron no. Donald? Okay. <laughs> I only can because I was looking at him, but like Michael Hope, I don't know if that's the right name. Uh, Byron Young, he's a rookie. I think he's like a fourth round pick. Um, and like, yeah, guys, Jonah Williams. There's a Jonah Williams on their front. That's so confusing. I, I kind of want to see them match up. I want to see our Jonah versus their Jonah. Let's, let's see where, was that, where was that line in the Super Bowl? Like, I wouldn't think that anything. <laughs> well, yeah, it was what uh, they're all gone. Bob Miller's in Buffalo. Didn't Leonard Floyd join him in Buffalo? I think, yeah. So they still run some of those same things for the, like that overload front that killed Cincinnati. It's like what the only thing the Rams did in the second half. They ran that against the 49ers, but instead of it being really intimidating, they actually moved Aaron Donald from inside, they moved him all the way out over the right tackle, which that's still pretty threatening to the Bengals. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and then they had three guys on the left side. I was just like, yeah, this was way more intimidating when those three guys were Aaron Donald and Leonard Floyd, and it was Von Miller isoed up against uh, Jonah Williams on the left side. Like that was that was a really intimidating. This this overload is like, okay, can we communicate and can we get two hands or four hands on Donald? So you mentioned running the ball, and I know fans are are screaming this right now. They've actually they've been doing it the last few weeks because they they see Joe Mixon and he looks productive. He looks like one of the best offensive players they have right now. You think they can lean in to a Joe Mixon game in this one? I think they can, and I definitely think if it's um, Jake Browning, they will. Mm -hmm. If it's Joe Burrow, I don't know if they will. I think I still would, but it might just look different, like some shotgun stuff just because he doesn't love being under center. And then also under center, your play action game is the boot stuff. And you're not, you're probably not asking Joe Burrow to boot out there with the cap injury. You want him running as little as possible. You want him very 2013 Broncos, Peyton Manning of like, he doesn't really move too much. Although was that the year that he had the Tony Romo game and then uh, he faked it and nobody thought Peyton Manning was running <laughs> he had like the seven second 40 yard dash to the end zone. We're gonna see right now, um, but I, but but with Jake, I, I kind of want to go back to Jake Browning because, like I said, and I, I feel like we both agree, it does feel more like a Jake Browning game. And look, this podcast is gonna come out, and you guys are gonna listen to it, and then we'll get news in two days that Joe Burrow is gonna play. And nothing surprises me right now when it comes to the quarterback decision. But right now, I'm leaning towards how my gut is feeling, and I, I'm okay with it to be honest. I I, I know that. Joe Burrow, I would say Joe Burrow gives you the better chance of getting a win. But at the same time, it's his health for me. And it's still extremely important. It is a long season. You do not want to go to 0-3. But Joe Burrow could go out there and you could still lose the game if he's not 100%. And he's not going to be 100%, even, even 80 75%. Um, so I think that that's extremely important in the move that the, the Bengals coaches make. But sticking with Jake Browning. Obviously, the topic of conversation, Brian Callahan uh, mentioned uh, a few of Jamar Chase's quotes. Jamar Chase talked about it on Monday. I feel like Brian's Brian, too honest. Brian and Jamar, a little, they're, they're, fun. they're honest, and I appreciate it. And I'm sure all the beat writers love when they get to interview both of them because they will just tell you how they're feeling. I don't really take Jamar Chase's comments as – Jamar is like, give me the ball. I want the ball. Um, you know, he he likes when T. Higgins is is getting his, and Jamar Chase will get his. Do you think this could be a Jamar Chase type of game? 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I really do. Because, look, I feel like not the entire reason. Like, part of the reason is because this is how the Ravens play, and it's easier to, you know, ISO up T, T. Higgins for all this stuff. But part of the reason had to be, like, let's get T's confidence back. He had a zero catch game and a lot of opportunities. So let's let's – Let's dial some plays up for him. Like that interception play, that was specifically dialed up for him. You know, they got him on Roquan Smith. It's just the backside safety uh, post when they thought he was going to bracket. Um, but there's other, but, you know, they got to T. Higgins multiple times on plays designed for him. I think we're going to see some design Jamar Chase plays. Now, can Jake Browning get him the ball? Well, hopefully. Can Joe Burrow do it? Yeah, I, I think that's the one part of like, Maybe the accuracy takes a little bit of a hit with the calf because I think it's his right leg, and that's why he's been using the push off. Um, not that it's that much better with the left leg, I guess, but <laughs> I do think the calf stretches a tiny bit more if I think about like pushing with that rather than stepping with it. But um, yeah, maybe the accuracy takes a slight hit, but I would trust that Joe Burrow can get him the ball. It's just one of those situations of like the the squeaky wheel gets the grease. <laughs> uh, so they're they I'm sure they want. Not, you know, Jamar Chase is, you know, being a diva or something. That's not at all what I'm saying. What no. I'm saying is that they want to build his confidence just like they did with T, where Boyd's been fine in both games. In fact, I think he was good this week, and he was fine the week before. Chase had a pretty good week one and then didn't have a good week two. So why don't we just, you know, let's dial up a couple of his, a couple of his favorite plays. Maybe it's just a go ball. I would trust that much more with Joe Burrow than I would with uh, Jake Browning, but hey, that's what he's out there for. Maybe that's what he's practicing. Um, but I would also think, like, I do want to see this is something I think famous fans are going to come at me with pitchforks. So listen to the whole thing. Okay. I want to see a few screens for Jamar Chase, but I don't want them to be like those smoke screens, those bubble screens that are just like, let's get these guys two on two. Jamar Chase makes a play and it's something. I want to see, like, full wide receiver screens of offensive linemen jutting out there to try to lead the way as well. I want to get him. That's how I would like, that'd be one of my first plays. I think if it was me, I'd throw in play action, throw it out wide and have, I think I'd run it to the left side and hopefully Orlando Brown's fast enough to get out there. <laughs> but <laughs> Orlando Brown, Ted Karras and Cordell Volson sprinting out to try to lead the way along with, I don't know, Tyler Boyd or somebody or Irv Smith, or, you know, somebody else out there to block the corner. That's a, So, like, I don't want a ton of them, but, like, I kind of want to run a real screen like that rather than some of these, like, oh, that corner is off. Let me just throw it to Chase, and hopefully we pick up four yards. Those are fine sometimes, but I want to uh, feed them screens, feed them real screens. But other than that, you know, work them vertical, get them some slants, um, some other opportunities that are quick hitting, get the ball in his hands, uh, and just dial up some plays for him. When you run like a flood concept, you've got a clear out, you've got a deep out, and you have a flat, you put him on the deep out. That's what the play is basically designed for. You don't really look at the clear out unless, you know, they cheated or something. The flat is just basically a check down. Get him on that one that's like, this is the this is where we want to go with the ball on this concept, and put Chase in that role. When it comes to, uh, I mentioned, you know, kind of feeling like it's going to be Jake Browning or quarterback for me, and obviously what we have now, it's going to be Jake Browning or Joe Burrow. Will Greer, surprising news. He was at practice on Thursday, and um, he's going to be on the active roster with the Patriots. Uh, there's no protection on the practice squad, and, and obviously the Bengals could have made a decision to move him to the 53. Um, I think, you know, that probably would have been a, a smart decision at the same time. This is where they're at when it comes to their, their quarterback room. I wouldn't be surprised if Trevor Simeon got a phone call yesterday and they said, hey, you want to join us on our practice squad? There is a chance that we need to activate you to the 53 uh, because you don't want to carry. If Jake Browning's starting, you want to carry another quarterback on your roster. I think Tyler Boyd is their emergency quarterback, and nobody wants to see that. What about Vixen? Um, what about Cam Taylor Britt? There's a few options here. What about Zach Taylor? The first ever coach no, player. I, I hope we don't get to that point. I really hope we don't get to that point. But, you know, they do have a decision to make, and um, they'll probably bring another player. I think you get somebody you're familiar with. Reed Senate is another one, um, somebody who had training camp reps they brought in after the calf strain. So he was there for, for a few weeks for the Cincinnati Bengals. You don't want to bring in someone who's 
has zero clue what the playbook is, what's going on. You have about 40 to 72 hours to learn everything just in case we need you. Um, so they're going to have to make a phone call for that. What did you think about the rear Gr Will Greer thing? Because everyone's kind of freaking out on social media, to be completely honest. <laughs> Okay, I'm not freaking out. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little, I had to log off a little bit yesterday. I think, man, people really love looking into the preseason. Like he had that one really good preseason game. And then I saw jersey swaps of Will Greer. I'm like, this guy might never play for the team, guys. <laughs> he signed to the practice squad. And he ends up going to the Patriots. Um, I think Bengals fans might be a little high off of those preseason games. I don't think of him that different than I think of Jake Browning. I think it's kind of a liability at quarterback. I think that, yes, they could try to go after some free agent. I think Carson Wentz is always brought up. I think Carson Wentz could work. It could also be the biggest disaster you could find. Um, and it could be both in the same game. Um, he's just he's a little too wild card for, big for what they want. And he's been that way ever since Doug Peterson, or I, well, Frank Reich left uh, Philly. It, you know, even when it was him and Doug, he started leaning into those tendencies a little bit. Um, so I'm not really into that too much, but I just think it's Browning, and they'll probably be Reed Sinet. It's most likely that they'll call up and try to be the backup. I think like it does suck that Will Greer was signed because he was easily going to be elevated for game and then going to be on the sideline getting a game check and. Uh, well, I guess he will with the active roster with New England, but you know, yeah. chance to go in. He's the true backup. Uh, so I, I didn't think he, they were going to start him, though. I don't know if people thought like mm -hmm. they were hiding who they were going to start because it feels to me like they keep saying Jake Brown. Even when Wilbur was still on the practice squad, they kept saying Jake Brown. They did not say, we. well, it could be Browning, could be Greer. And uh, we know coaches love doing that. They're like, ah, it gives us a, the 5%, the, 0.003% advantage if we hide who the quarterback is. They don't know the tendencies of Will Greer. It's like, hey, they don't know the tendencies of Will Greer anyway. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, I think a lot of Bengals fans are like, I feel like the Bengals are just playing a game with the Rams right now. They're trying to hide who's going to be starting. That's not what's happening. Um, right. I don't know. Like coaches lean into that when they're doing that. They're like, yeah. I think of the Cardinals earlier this year. They're like, ooh, it's an open competition between the guy we just traded for and the guy that was the backup. It's like, is it? Not really, not at all. But no, this so they is announced like who the starter is the next day. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna know. And and I honestly, I, I would say, you know, good for Will. It feels like the Patriots are are taking all of the quarterbacks right now on their roster. But um, to be completely honest, I, you know, to be determined, I I do agree with you. I think Reed Senate is probably your best option. I want to say they did um, ask Trevor Simeon to be on the practice squad, and and that didn't work out. So yeah. um, this was in, during training or when they were making the fifty three man. It roster. could be Simeon, yeah. I mean, so. We'll see. He could say, you know what? I'll go ahead and join your 53 man uh, for, well, he'll be practice squad and then they'll, they'll activate him if they need to for a backup quarterback. If Joe Burrow can't go on Monday night football, but that's where the quarterback room is right now. And I would say for me personally, if Joe Burrow can go and he feels good, then great, great. Put Joe Burrow out there. But for me personally, his health is the number one most important thing. So if Jake Browning has to go this week, um, we already talked about it. You lean on to running the ball, get Jamar Chase involved. I agree with the confidence level. I actually made that comment before the Baltimore Ravens game. I said, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Joe's going to tee early and obviously the touchdowns were late in the fourth quarter, but at the same time, he, he looked like T again. And I right. think that's extreme. it's extremely important to do that. Um, so, so this offense just needs to get its confidence back. And when it comes to the offensive line, I know we were already talking about the D line for the, for the Rams, but you got to see better out of your interior going into this. Yeah. Game. Well, I mean, I didn't think Volson played particularly well in that Ravens game, but I thought most of the other guys were fine. To, I think Terrace was good. I think Kappa was pretty good. And then there was just Volson is, not terrible, but you know, the weak link of the offensive line. Yeah. Uh, and the, Ram, the, the Ravens has a few guys there, but yes, they need to be better than that. They need to be excellent, like their best games for this one because it's Aaron Donald. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's still peak Aaron Donald. I'm only mm -hmm. a couple plays into the Rams watch, so I'm not going to make any hot takes there. But even if it's not, like 90% of Aaron Donald is probably still top two, three interior defensive linemen, like 
up there with the Chris Joneses of the world because he was like a tier above them when he was at his peak. Uh, so in, he's coming off that injury. Maybe he's just starting slow. And it also could be I just haven't watched enough. Maybe he actually is. I mean, what he had Gina Smith saying, like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that brought back flashbacks. I'm like, yes, every single Cincinnati Bengals fans have, have a little PTSD from the Super Bowl when we see the the low lights. A little they easier do. to get the double teams on Aaron Donald in this game, though, now that there's no Von Miller, Leonard Floyd, a lot of other guys. I mean, I don't even think they have great games anymore. I kind of look that one up. Well, that's so, like, where even, like, the auxiliary pieces are gone. That's where how we're feeling about the Bengals offense right now. Again, to be determined on what it looks like, feels like a quarterback decision will be made on Monday. As of now, Joe Burrow is preparing to play Monday night football, but the Bengals are going to talk to the experts. We'll move over to the defense of the side of the ball, because I think a lot of people, when they looked at this on the schedule, the Los Angeles Rams, and you could even look at last year, I know they battled a lot of injuries, but Matthew Stafford, Still a top, I would say top 10 quarterback. I've said it a few times. Mm -hmm. And they have a special wide receiver right now because I thought without Cooper Cub, I'm like, whoo, their offense might struggle a little bit. But um, it's been moving along just fine. And they were playing a really good 49ers team last week, too. Yeah, that was the game that it's like, okay, week one probably wasn't a fluke. And you're keeping up with the 49ers and you demolish the Seahawks. This is a team much better than we thought it was. Uh, and there's a chance it's still whatever. But in my mind, I'm just going like, I don't think this was just, you know, a mirage. Look at what the 49ers did to the Giants. It was expected. This is what people expected them to do with the Rams, too. And the Rams stuck in there. They were in that game for a lot of it. Uh, Matthew Stafford's playing really well. And it's kind of impressive because older quarterback coming off the injury, you think of the guys that usually do that. They end up looking like Ben Roethlisberger's last two years or something. Where it's like, yeah, he doesn't really have much on the ball anymore. No, Matthew Stafford's still throwing trick shots. Fire, firing some balls in there. Good quarterback. Um, they have a great play caller in Sean McVay. I think Sean McVay, this is a kind of almost like a statement year for him. He's just like, yeah, you guys always talk about, you know, Kyle Shanahan makes this work. Kyle Shanahan makes that work, even when the team's bad. It's like this team on paper was predicted to go like two wins, four wins, and I'm going to take them to the playoffs type of thing. Uh, yeah, really good offense. Um, when I'm watching them, like, I, I don't know too many of these pieces. I am a little upset. Uh, we should have been able to predict this Puka Nakua thing, but Jordan Rodriguez came out with her article this week about how he's getting, he's joined the breakfast club with Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup. If we knew that, I mean, come on. 100%. Wait, where's, where's that reporting before the season? It was like, oh, that's a breakfast guy. I gotta, I gotta get him in fantasy. I gotta, you know, he's gonna do great. Uh, but no, I mean, on the serious side of it, I mean, Tutu Atwell, surprising. He's like a 150-pound wide receiver. They took him in the second round three years ago, and he's having a good year. They're using him in interesting ways, utilizing his speed because I think he's a 4-2, maybe low 4-3 guy. Puka Nakua just seems like a really smart receiver, and that's how he's making his money. A lot of people keep saying that he's kind of like Robert Woods, and that makes sense. Willing to block, smart receiver, does work usually within 10, 15 yards, but in over the middle of the field. Um Tyler Higby is Tyler Higby. Kyron Williams, I loved him before he was draft eligible. I remember I was watching Liam Eichenberg, and Liam's kind of whatever. I was kind of like zoned in. I was like, man, this running back. Uh, not in terms of running the ball or catching the ball. This is a me thing. I was like, he is blocking his tail off. <laughs> Pass protection. He was getting some pancakes. He was knocking guys around. I was like, the Bengals can use a Kyron Williams because he's an awesome pass protector. And now he looks like a good runner. A solid mm -hmm. receiver, and of course, he still has the pass protection. Um, yeah, yeah, there's the weapons you might not be familiar with them, but they're utilizing them and they're all doing well. Van Jefferson is still there, who's like a solid third mm -hmm. wide receiver. When you think of the defense and, you know, just over the last few weeks, stopping the run, getting pressure on the quarterback, it really does feel like I know we've 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 been um, all on Joe Burrow watch and, and what's going to happen if Joe Burrow is going to play. It does seem optimistic that Joseph Asai is going to be returning this week. And what yeah. does that do for your D-line? I think it <clears throat> right now through two games, their second best pass rusher has been the nose tackle DJ Reader. Not ideal. You don't want him on the field on passing downs like third and 30. He shouldn't be on the field. He should be getting some early oxygen, uh, just taking a breather on the sideline because he probably helped put them in third and 30. 
kind of, well, he did what, what, what the first and 30, second and 30, the two back to back holding calls. He drew both holding calls. He's still out there. It's like, ah, oh, man, like these are obvious passing downs. A little disappointed in a little disappointed in the performances from most of the other guys so far. Mm-hmm. I mean, Trey Hendrickson's still their best pass rusher, but man, watching back, I was like, so many opportunities to go one on one with Patrick McCarry. Kind of has another feel like that this week. Alaric Jackson is the Rams left tackle, and I think he's been fine for them. And Nick Bosa didn't have a sack against either of their tackles. And the Seahawks, I don't think he allowed a sack, but that's the Seahawks defensive line. Um, I think he has an opportunity. Like on paper, I would predict this as like one of the big mismatches of the game would be Alaric Jackson versus Trey Hendrickson. But I thought that last week. Then you look at the rest of the offensive line. They've got Steve Avila, who's a rookie. Maybe you can get him. I think he's one of the better physical and technical members. Their center is no longer Brian Allen. Brian Allen got benched. It's Coleman Shelton. I would probably attack that. Why not? Uh, right guard is where they moved no- Joe Noteboom after giving him the big contract. That's another one. It's like, you know, he, that guy's a te- well, at least he was a tackle like his whole career. Then Rob haven't signed at right tackle. I kind of, I mean, him and Sam Hubbard went against each other and Sam didn't do much. Um, but maybe that's a Joseph Osai spot. Maybe you move Sam Hubbard inside to take advantage of Noteboom at right guard or uh, Avila at left guard. I think that could be interesting. I think Joseph Osai, though, if he could be the secondary pass rusher that this team has dreadfully needed, that would be such a boost. Uh, Cam Sample, I think, has done some interesting stuff. He's fine. Miles Murphy got a pressure last week on Makari. I know mm-hmm. people are always down on him. They want to treat um, him right now. <laughs> right. Well, they just it's, wanted Michael Mayer, but you know, Michael Mayer has one catch for two yards. It's like they keep talking about how these guys would we should have taken a guy that would impact us now. And the guys they name are like not making impacts for the team they're playing. It's like, well, it's not like you're out there saying, like, yeah, we should have taken uh oh man, I can't think of somebody right. Maybe Steve Avila, who's a starting left guard. Maybe we should have taken Steve Avila. They don't say that. They say we should have taken Michael Mayer. We should have taken this other guy that's not making an impact. It's like, okay, well, like none of these guys would probably be doing much for the Bengals guys. So, Miles Murphy, I think you're just looking for flashes. He had a pressure last week. That's a flash to me. I want to see him get a sack? Maybe he can get a sack this week. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'm predicting it, but yeah. <laughs> it'd be cool. Uh, yeah, I think the Bengals defensive line on paper has the advantage over the Rams offensive line, but I thought that last week. So, they're paying so much money to that defensive line. They are mm-hmm. paying them a ton of money, and they have been bad so far. No pressure. And they're also – they're not doing a good job against the run either. I mean, five yards per carry, I think, the last two weeks and 200 yards last week, they're one of the worst run defenses in the league. So step it up. You know, like that. show show national media, you're on Monday Night Football, show them that this Bengals defensive line, they don't get pushed around, and they will get pressure. You know, one of those, one of those games, like, it's kind of – if they don't look good against the Rams – my concern level raises to eight. I'm like, okay, but we are spending way too much money here to not have an effect. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, it needs to be a bounce back game for Logan Wilson. Um, yeah. Who last week. And there was just a lot of guys. I, I know we want to point at the offense and slow starts are extremely important, but it did look like the offense had a bounce back in the second half versus the Baltimore Ravens. And the defense just needed one more stop. The Bengals would have been able to get the ball back and they struggled. And then you can't and you Lamar Jackson looked and of course it's Lamar Jackson is really good. He's a really good quarterback, but the defense, they just couldn't stop him. And you need that against Matthew Stafford in this offense that I still feel like is semi underrated when it comes to the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, but they're they're starting to get noticed over the last few weeks. And it's just an extremely important bounce back game for Lou and the defensive side of the ball. I know we're talking a lot about the offense, and it would be good to to go ahead and I know you hate this. Get the ball first. Go down the field. Oh score a touchdown. Play with the lead for once because, you know, maybe get your defense off the field. But um, I want to see more out of the Davis defense. Get themselves off the field, too. I mean, seven That's and a right. half right. minutes, 15 right. play drive for the Ravens to start and then another one back to back. It's like, yeah. You're right. It, it, we can criticize the defense. You know, we, we've talked about the offense a lot, the play calling for Zach Taylor and, and what they're dealing with with Joe Burrow's calf. It's fair to criticize the defense right now. And the defense has to step up if they want to get out of this this 0-2 record right now and finally get a win. It's national Monday night football. It's time to make 
the predictions go. Okay, I think I'm going to do two. I think I'm going to do one with Burrow, one with Yes, Tom. we are doing two. Okay. My Browning one, I think, is... Twenty-one to ten, Rams. I don't have a lot of faith in them building out a Browning offense, but we'll see. I mean, I hope I'm right. My Burrow one is a little more fast pace, you know, a little more high scoring. Twenty-seven, twenty-one, Rams. I think the Rams win. Yeah, I agree. It's really, really unfortunate. It's, it's. We, I just wish we had a percentage on how Joe feels, and we just don't. We really don't. If they put Joe out there, and I get it, he was even asked, "Your zero and two, do you think about?" It? And he goes, "Yeah, I think about it." You know, it, it isn't the same zero and two as last year when he's like, "Relax, relax." Then they go end up beating the New York Jets, and it's and the then, injury because that's just the main thing that feels so different. Is last year it was like we need to figure out some schematic stuff and some guys need to play better, but I trust the staff to, to do that. And they did. And they went on that run this year. It's we need Burrow to get healthy because part of my Burrow prediction there, the 27, 21 is just like, what is he at? Like 60%. Like, yeah. The offense will probably be a little bit better. They'll move a little bit faster, but at the end of the day, I just think this Rams team's good. I, I think they showed they're a good team. Like we keep thinking about them on paper. We need to kind of move on from that two weeks in. Yeah, I agree with you. I think if Burrow plays or Browning plays, the Bengals still fall on this one. And it's just really unfortunate. It, it's This offense doesn't function without a a, a healthy Joe Burrow. Um, it doesn't. And I know a lot of people want to point out, and we hear all the time, Joe Burrow has the weapons. That's why Joe Burrow is good. Well, we're, we're noticing that that isn't the case. Joe Burrow does have really great weapons, but it functions when Joe Burrow is functioning. And um, even if he's out there on Monday night, I still feel like, Unfortunately, they fall. I'll say um, 2017 Rams. It sounds close, but it might not be. Maybe in the fourth quarter, they get another touchdown. And then if Jake Browning plays, I'm very similar to you. I think they put 10 points up and uh, the Rams are able to put 24. I'm just, hopefully, I'm not. Hopefully it's a Jamar Chase touchdown to get his confidence going for when Burrow gets back. Yeah, 100%. It's unfortunate. And look, I, I hope I'm wrong. Crazier things have happened on Monday Night Football with Zach oh, Taylor. Oh, Muppet Night Football, never forget. With, with Zach Taylor in a backup, backup quarterback. So, um, you know, will, will I be surprised? No, it's Monday Night Football. You're home. The atmosphere, the last primetime game. I know everything that happened in the Buffalo Bills game, but before the game got started, it was the most intense I've ever seen Pacor Stadium in a great way. And maybe you get that vibe back on Monday Night Football. But unfortunately, they have a lot of things to figure out right now. And, and, and it's outside of Joe Burrow. It's on both sides of the ball. So we'll see if they can bounce back. And if both of us are wrong, I would love to be wrong. I would love to come, to come on the podcast so, on Tuesday. I, I I didn't know where to fit this, but I wanted to mention it. Do you, do you know anything about Jake Browning in college? He was uh, John Ross's quarterback. Ah, oh, that's what I was going to mention. It was like, what, what a full circle moment. Like, he was the quarterback for John Ross. Like, I think some people think he's really young. He's actually been in the league a while. I think on the Bengals practice squad. And he's just now made the backup job rather than the third string job. But it's like, yeah, <laughs> that's it's, John Ross's quarterback. It's, and uh, oh, who's the other cat? It's not important. There's another wide receiver that made the NFL on that team too. But yeah, that's where we're at. That's where we're at right now. Uh, hopefully, the Bengals do bounce back, and everything that we just said doesn't happen. But we will see in uh, a few days what happens on Monday Night Football. We'll actually be back on Tuesday night. Our regular scheduled programming, you'll hear it on Wednesday morning. A little breakdown of what happens on Monday Night Football, an update on Joe Burrow. As always, make sure you check Mike's fantastic workout over on All Bengals. You can follow him, Bengals underscore Sand. You can follow me at LNDS Patterson. Thank you for listening, too. It's always game day in Cincinnati. 